Do you need to pass GED or high set math? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the fastest methods for getting some of the most commonly asked questions right so that you can pass faster and get a higher score. We're gonna look at topics such as word problems, ratios, price, using graphs, place values, and solving questions with slope. And we're gonna get this done all in under eight minutes. Hi, this is Parker from Test Prep Champions, teaching you how to pass the GED fast so you can move on to bigger and better things. And you can get started by clicking subscribe down below. Question one, a used motorcycle can be purchased for $500 cash or on credit with a $200 down payment plus payments of $70 per month for five months. How much would be saved by paying cash? So pause the video, try to figure this out, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so let's go over this. So what we need to do here is we first have to calculate how much it would cost to pay by credit, and then we are going to find the difference between the cost of paying by credit versus cash. So we're told here that we pay a $200 down payment. So to find out how much you would pay in credit, so I'm just gonna let C equal credit, the equation would be 200 for the $200 down payment plus $70 per month, so plus 70. And since it's five months, we would multiply 70 times five. Now, in the order of operations rules, we always want to do multiplication before we would do addition. So you don't wanna do 200 plus 70, you wanna start with 70 times five. So in my calculator, 70 times five, that gives me 350. So let me, let's rewrite that. So we get 200 plus 350, so that gives us 550. So now what we figured out is that the cost for credit is 550. So we want to find the difference between that and if you paid cash, right? So the cost for credit, 550. The cost for paying cash would be 500. So we subtract the two and 550 minus 500, that equals 50. So answer A is the correct answer. A solution of salt water is made by dissolving two grams of salt in one liter of water. Which of the following would yield a solution with the same concentration. So try this one out, pause the video, and we'll go over it. Okay, let's go over this. So to get this question right, what we have to pay attention to is the ratio of grams to liters, right? So G obviously means grams, and L obviously stands for liters. So the question here is telling us that the ratio of grams to liters is two to one. So we want to look at the answer choices here, and we need to find one of the answer choices where there are twice as many grams and as there are liters because the ratio again it's two to one. So this answer choice B is obviously false because this would be a one to one ratio. Likewise any answer choice that has fewer grams than liters is also going to be out. So this is what we're really looking for here and so in this case let's take a look at answer C. It says dissolving one gram of salt in half a liter of water so that's going to be the correct answer because there are twice as many grams of salt as there are liters of water. An appliance store uses the following formula to set its selling prices. Price equals actual cost plus 25% of actual cost. If the actual cost of a refrigerator is $800, what price will the store set for the refrigerator? So go ahead, pause the video, and then we'll go over this. Okay, so to get this question right here, first let's clarify that what we're trying to find here is the price that the store is gonna set for the refrigerator. So if we look at the equation that they're giving us, what we're trying to find is the price right here. So so they're telling us that starting out the actual cost is 800 so we're going to substitute that into the formula here wherever we see actual cost right so let's rewrite this formula here so note how when I rewrite the formula here 25% I write that as 0.25 and so now all we're going to do is do the math and again we want to make sure that we do the multiplication first before we do the addition so let's do 0.25 times 800 and then we'll rewrite so 0.25 times 800 gives us 200 so we now are going to do 800 plus 200 and let's do 800 plus 200 which gives us a thousand and so it's pretty clear that d is our correct answer here question four the following graph shows the sales figures for a toy company since it opened 10 years ago according to the graph what was the approximate dollar value of sales in the company's ninth year of business so go ahead pause the video as always try this out and then we'll go over it all right so let's look at this question here so we see on the graph here on the vertical axis we see 
dollars in millions and it's giving us 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Now we also see years down here. So here it tells us the ninth year of business. So we want to focus on what's going on in year nine. So down here on the horizontal axis, it's showing us the years and then we see dollars and millions on the vertical axis. So we want to look at what's going on in year nine. So if we trace this value all the way over here to our vertical axis, okay, we see that this value corresponds to 0.75. Now we know that this is 0.75 because it's between 0.7 and 0.8. So let's call this 0.75. So what's important to get here are place values, right? Because this is 0.75 million dollars. So place values, this would be the ones, the tens, the hundreds, then we get to thousands, and then we get to ten thousands, hundred thousands, and then finally the millions place here. So since we're talking about 0.75 million, okay, we know that 0.75 million, that's something that is not even a million dollars, right? So we know that anything that is has a number in the millions place is going to be out. So A and B are out here, right? Because A is 75 million. All right, so now how do you know if it's C, D, or E? Well, one quick way to do it is to do 0.75 times 1 million, and that's going to tell us how much money 0.75 million dollars is. So here's 1 million. So if we do 1 million, so this is what 1 million looks like here. And if we do 1 million times 0.75, you'll get 750,000, which is answer C. Question five. It says, although the numbers are not included on either axis, it is possible to determine from the shape and location that the equation y equals negative 1.2. 2x plus 4 corresponds to graph and it gives you multiple answer choices here. So go ahead now use this graph in the question, try to figure this out and then we'll go over it. Okay so this is a really awesome question and this is a really really important question to understand here and this is one of those things that you either know it or you don't. So here's what you first have to understand. So y equals mx plus b and so this m value right here this represents the slope. So m it just represents the slope here and and the B represents your Y intercept. So if we look at this equation here, we see Y equals negative 1.2 X plus four. So what you need to first recognize here is what is the value of the slope in this equation? Well, we can tell that it's negative 1.2. So that's the first thing that you have to understand. Now, the second thing is that you have to know what a negative slope looks like on a graph, right? Because on a graph, so on any graph, a negative slope is gonna look like this, right? It's gonna start high and it's going to end up low. Whereas on the other hand, a positive slope, a line with a positive slope is going to look something like this. It's going to start low and it's going to go high. So just by knowing that, we just look at these lines on the graph here. And so we want to focus in on R here. So see how it starts high and it goes low, right? So this is what we call a negative slope. So R is the right answer here. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure that you watch part two because I really want to help you pass math as fast as possible so that you can move on to big and better things in life. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and trusting me with your test prep. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions wishing you the best of luck.